And I'll be honest, I felt like he felt the pressure of having to live up to the expectations that kind of preceded his arrival into that final season. Maybe he wanted to be QB1. Maybe he had heard all the noise about Caleb Williams, and he felt like he had to do too much because he didn't play at the same level. That said, the talent is still there. You see the talent shows up on tape. It's just a matter of being able to understand why there was the fall off and is a team willing to bypass that to look at the traits that he brings to the table. And now we're saying, Drake, uh, still this is not yet into the script going through warm-ups, so actually uh, kind enough to share with everybody. Um, we're we're going to see Tez uh, get the majority of the targets today. And, and, it, and you mentioned that's, that's probably a good idea. It is a good idea. You want to see him throw to NFL-caliber receivers. Uh, and that's not taking anything away from the guys that are also catching passes. But you want to see that because the timing is going to be most like what he's going to do at NFL level. What we're seeing early now, this is like pat and go. So these are the layup line drills in basketball. Just have an opportunity to just kind of see the form, see the ball kind of get out of his hands. It's easy throwing. Everyone who has been around Drake May, everyone who has watched these games live, you have a feel for the velocity and the arm talent. This is an opportunity for him to show it off in a different way as he eases into this workout. And so we, we covered the, the, the plan uh, in Los Angeles last week. Caleb Williams wanted to dispel with this idea that all right, looks like we are going to get to the actual script uh, of today, starting with a couple of smoke routes uh, out showing him uh, getting the ball out of his hands pretty quickly. Though. Yeah, now you're going to see that get the ball out of his hands. These are the easy throws, but also the tempo with which he's working. We're going to get a chance to see his conditioning level. I like that because it keeps us bored, but it's one of those things that we also see from him. All right, we'll get to our first hitch, uh, then another one inside slant. Uh, coming up the offense, uh, Bucky. He is the prototype. He is exactly what has played at the position for years on end. But he also has is the athleticism to work off the script. He can do the design quarterback runs. He can scramble and make plays. So really, I mean, look, it, it, it's wide open for him. It says designs, and that is a great thing when you evaluate him as a prospect. Swinging that ball out. out. Uh, we saw a little bit of it in, in a few clips of Drake May using his legs. Legs underappreciated? He's different than what I would say some of the other quarterbacks. So when we talk about Jaden Daniels, we talk about he can run, but he's more of a scrambler. Drake May, if he wants to, he can tuck it under his arm and do some of those quarterback powers and things. But he certainly has that club in his bag, and it allows you to add dimensions to your offense. Yeah, right so here's now. what I like, man. I, I love, like, when I, was, when I was working in the league, we would always bring prospects in and ask them, Patterson's game after Josh Allen. And I love that because you can see that in his play, how rugged he is as a, as a runner, the talent that he has, and the special things that he brings to the table. That is what I would expect from Drake May, even though while we were talking, he had a little errant pass that went well over the head of the wide receiver. It's just one of those things where you just have to eventually get into it, get into it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think everybody, like, I mean, look at the number of people that are there watching him. He understands what is riding on this workout. Uh, the pressure and the butterflies can get to you. That ball hit the side. Uh, <laughs> it was reverberating uh, throughout, but it looks like he's grooving this uh, out route. First with Caleb Williams, then with Jaden Daniels and Drake May. It is very easy for them to make these throws. It's not a lot of, there's some things that you can work with and also, People are saying that acknowledging there's some little mechanical things that they can fix is absolutely what you desire to position. All right, so down there behind Drake May right now. He had a ball that was a little bit placed behind him. He drops it. Drake tells him, hey, Tez, let's go back out there, run a slant again. Uh, Tez, uh, he was out there. He's, we had him on camera just a few minutes ago. Uh, what, what are your impressions? You know, first of all, uh, this is a kid who he's not really, he's a senior. Right of playing college football, of experience. He was in COVID, his COVID year, he had a knee injury. Then COVID year, wasn't allowed, you know, obviously wasn't allowed to play. So he's been through a lot uh, mentally. And so he's not a finished product. And I think, that's, I, I think that's a good thing, but you can't teach speed. And so when you got a guy, a six one, six feet, that has some speed, man, the way he is uh, currently right now with his body of work, which is not necessarily his fault. And there we see uh, Tez. How do you view Tez uh, coming into the draft here? So, look, Tez is a talented receiver, but much like what Steve said, he hasn't played a lot. He gives you a lot in the flashes, but I think any team that takes him has to understand that there's going to be some time needed to allow him to develop before he can be a big-time contributor at the next level. Early reviews, uh, but anything that would take you off, uh, Drake May, uh, today? No, nothing that would take you off. 
that's what coaching is for. Right now, as an evaluator, what you're looking at is, what is the talent like? What, what can I do with the talent? Quarterbacks throwing motion from the ground up. If you're trying to evaluate, as, as they come right back to that throw and he hits it, uh, to Tez. Get a little bit too excited, but I, I mean, at the end of the day, He's a hell of a football player, and he knows how exactly that this this is about impressing people. His body of work is very impressive already, but he knows this is the final touch. This is the cherry on top. Um, I actually like what, what Steve is talking about because one of the things Steve talked about, like when he made the mistake, he can immediately identify. Didn't play his final season of high school because of COVID. Didn't play his freshman year because of the presence of Sam Howell, and he redshirted. So he's only played the last two years. So even though it seems that he's an older player entering the league, he's really a young player, which is why most would advocate for him sitting that first year. Through this, this workout, point, Bucky. it's a discussion we've had many times about just that, Bucky, whether or not a quarterback needs to sit. Well, I, it really depends on how your team is structured and understanding the fine china with, with the with gloves and making sure that you have a contingency plan like we're losing or we're not sure why or what the natural reaction is to blame the quarterback good contingency plan to help support him and have a good cast around him no matter what so you, so he can be able to you and your staff and your organization like a Drake may really with all quarterbacks it should be an organizational decision from ownership down I would say the team that has been the best at developing quarterbacks over the last 30 years has been the Green Bay Packers. We saw how patient they were with Aaron Rodgers. And so you would have had an opportunity to kind of compare and contrast in real time. Well, now what you do at all these workouts, this pro day workout is videotaped. So you have these quarterbacks, but a lot of it is feel. What do you feel? Who represents what you want at the position? All those other things. And in meetings, in these one-on-one -on -one conversations. Can you trust that he is going to be the face of the franchise and do all of the things that go along with that uh, responsibility of being? That's what we want to see. Maybe we'll get some more oohs and ahs. Mm -hmm. There's the post. Oh, yeah, we're going to let it go. We're going to make sure we air it all the way out. Some solid tracking there. We saw the track, yeah. Okay, so yesterday, we, the other day, we talked about Jaden Daniels, and we talked about um, he's an intermediate Playmaker. He does his work. He can throw it deep, but it's, it's different. With Drake May, we're just talking about the raw talent. When you're drafting a quarterback. It should be a major part of it because what does my quarterback need to be successful? So we'll use uh, Josh Allen because that's the name that keeps coming up. And I'll, I'll do the math there uh, on that deep post that we just uh, saw the replay of because that, that was on a five-step drop. So it landed at the goal line. That, that, was a, that was an easy 60 yards as Drake you know, clearly putting the arm strength on this. You're not going to build the offense around this stuff, but it's nice to have someone who certainly can make those throws uh, out of the structure of the offense. If we develop them right and surround them with the right pieces. So as we get back, there's a, looks like a seam ball. We saw those deep balls here from Los Angeles. How did those deep balls feel uh, getting a chance to be down there on the field in North Carolina? <laughs> because he is out there dropping dimes. <laughs> I mean, he is literally, he's moving in the pocket. Quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs as Patrick Mahomes was just sitting in practice being Patrick Mahomes, developing, develop and improve. So when he's ready, at least on paper, 50th pass, you can see all levels of the field, deep, pad deep passes he's showing you with velocity, spinning a ball that he can play under calmness, and I like what I'm seeing from him. Look, it sounds like Steve Smith as a veteran receiver, as a Hall of Fame, you can't control what the player's reaction is going to be. When the players walk out that first time from minicamp, the expectation is when you draft somebody in the top five, they want to see that kind of talent plays for him. Kevin Call is a stone cold killer as a play caller. You have Josh McCown in the building. Think about the playmakers around him. Two outstanding wide receivers. One and Justin Jefferson, who is maybe wide receiver one in the league, while also running the football with Aaron Jones. To me, it's a no-brainer. The Minnesota Vikings are the place where Drake may make the trade, uh, get another pick. Uh, just how aggressive Quessy and the gang uh, there in Minnesota will be as uh, Drake may has moved to the red zone as we are on the 64th uh, throw. Uh, Steve, good idea to finish with touchdowns? Oh. They're going to throw the ball off their back foot. They're not always going to set their feet. And he's throwing the ball with precision and putting some touch on it, right? 
And so he's showing that he can do it and still have touch. So I, I really like the game plan that they, they have going on that display who he is and what how Drake May can play and what he brings to the table. So that's what I like uh, watching this red zone. But also show that you can do what people want you to do uh, at the same time. And it, Scouts may have, it, or may have had about his game, but also a reminder of the talent that he brings to the table. Looks like we've got another ball going to Tez Walker. Wow. To me, those things are encouraging. It's not about the results, it's more so about the process. I like the process of him wanting to go back and do it all over again. And there we go, second time is the charm as he hits throw number 70 on the script and he's dapping folks up. Look, it's, it's a really good performance and I know it's not perfect and right pro day right performances, now, so look, as much as we want them to be perfect, but the ball doesn't hit the ground. I actually am more encouraged by the misses and the corrections after the misses uh, than anything.